up to you. Yeah, I'm good. This is Karen with Rainier Avenue Radio Dot World, and we are on Capitol Hill, Seattle, walking up Pine Street towards the gathering of protesters. I, I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> I just want to say I, I'm from Third Ward, the same neighborhood that George is from. We lived on the opposite side, but uh, I've been following streams for like two weeks, man. And, uh, I'm here with Raz Simone. Uh, everyone that I talk to on Twitch just refers me to your feed. I watched you interview the police chief earlier. It was incredible, man. That's just crazy. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't mean to call you out. I just wanted, no, to, I just wanted to say hello. No, thank you. What's your name, bro? Ryan. Ryan? Thank yeah, you, Ryan. I'll see you around. I'll see you out here. This I'm is like, you. what, day 14, 13? Oh, more for no. you. So it's, I'll see you out here tomorrow. Exactly. Every day. Right, man. <laughs> so, Raz, you've become a very recognizable figure throughout this uh, protest happening here in Seattle. Can you let our audience know who you are? Introduce yeah, yourself. My name is Raz Simone. Um, I'm from Seattle Central District, Duce, 28th and Jackson. Um, yeah, I'm out here out here because it's the right thing to do. I've been an artist for a long time, so like everybody, a lot, most people know me in the city. Um, and then now, with all this happening, um, this was just like one of those natural things that, you know, it just, I had it in my stomach, I had to do it. You know, I didn't even want to be out here like that, but it's, it was, I had to, it was the right thing to do. The momentum of everything happening, everyone's energy in the world, I could just feel it. It's like, I need to be out here, I need to do anything. So anytime I walk up somewhere, if I start speaking, it's something like, people just want to hear my voice. and. Then I was trying to talk to more people so I can be an echo of the voices instead of just speaking to my own agendas and things like that. So it's one of those natural things that happen, and I'm here. I can't leave it. Okay. Ah. So what is and it I that you have to? Now I'm also making sure that I'm here to protect people as well. So. Yeah. And those are things actually that I was hoping that you would be willing to um, tell us about um, because. You have been an um, avid live streamer, as that gentleman was just talking about, that he follows all of your streams and has been referred to it. Um, I myself have seen them. Um, can you tell us um, how you uh, took on that role and what that's looked like? And then let's talk about your role, what you see your role is as providing security here. Okay, so I've just been doing whatever's needed, you know, whatever makes sense. Um, not about getting a photo op or you know running streams up or anything like that just whatever's needed that's why it's been like what the last hour many hours i haven't ran a stream because it's not about that i run the streams because i want people to be able to see this and be able to get motivated people to come out here and all that stuff but then i'll put that in my pocket or i mean i could delegate that to someone else and be more efficient but when there's a need that's when i go and i cover you know so if it's a security breach or you know if people are feeling afraid or worried, worried about cowboys, I don't even know what that is or what that means, but, you know, worried about white supremacists that might want to mess with these people, um, worried about people driving through crowds, like I was there when the guy drove through the crowd and then hopped out and shot one of our friends, you know, um, you know, and, and when I was on the other side of the crowd, but I was right there, so right in front of it, like 30 feet away, and, you know, with people in the way. So, um, you know, when I, when I was watching that, I was like, okay, we need to have better security. Um, we got a bunch of the scanners, the police scanners that we were checking, saying a bunch of crazy things about white supremacists and big groups, white supremacists marching in on us and stuff like that. So, one of the things where everyone, the tension was so weird, and everyone was feeling like super scared in there. And so, I wanted to just make sure that people felt safe. And so, I had to pull out the. <laughs> the AR-15 and the AK and stuff like that and, you know, just have it out there and um, uh, and then I guess from what they said is that, you know, the those uh, white supremacist antagonists just turned around and hopped back in the cars and didn't come over here, you know, because a lot of them have been watching my live stream or other live streams and seeing what's going on and, um, you know, it's one of those things where they, people like that come out to intimidate, it's just like bullies, but, you know, if you're there and you're not afraid, then it doesn't work and so then they just end up being um, and a lot of them, just like cops, are super afraid of black men with guns. So, for whatever reason, black men in general. So, you know, I feel like it's one of those things where being that and standing out here, standing on the line and protecting people and checking the exits and having all kinds of armed security at the exits, um, it was just one of those things where everyone felt safe. And it was actually beautiful because at first it was like, people were kind of like, like, you know, it's a gun, and then people were like, wait a second, actually, this whole time we've been having these cops out here with guns, and we got these threats and these proud boys, and the cops aren't doing anything, and they come, 
this is the first time I actually feel safe. Oddly enough, you know, um, I've had a bunch of people come up to me and say, "Let's the residents here." Um, I sat down and had a 30-minute 30, 30, uh, conversation um, with uh, one of the trans people, and um, they were saying that I've been here for 35 years, and this is they were the most safe last night and now, you know, us out here. So those are those things we're checking with the residents and making sure that we're doing good by them. And yeah, people were so fed up with the way that SPD handled things, going to war with us and throwing, you know, their, their tear gas was coming into the window where their baby sleeps. You know, things like that. And that's not even legally, we're not supposed to be able to deploy that. They're not supposed to, it's against the Geneva Convention laws. You can't even use that combat with your enemy. You know, so it's like at another foreign land, you know, so it's kind of crazy to use it against our own people, the people that they're supposed to protect and serve, that we pay them half a billion dollars every year to protect and serve us. So um, it's a big slap in the face for a lot of people. That, uh, I think that, Last night, the night before, they got, they got like 15,000 complaint calls about how SPD was handling things. And so it was one of those things where, yeah, and you saw, I think yesterday was it, the mayor, the mayor, Mayor Durkin, um, said that she wants to defund the police, SPD, $100 million. So it's like, people know that they fucked up. They know they fucked up. So much so that the mayor is gonna throw them under the bus. They fucked up that bad. So, so it's were like, you at the uh, uh, event at City have Hall? A PR session now, and they're trying to get it together. Mm. You know, um, we had a, a, a chief of police, the fire chief wanted to meet me in the morning, and then the chief of police wanted to meet me right then. So, both the fire, chief, fire chief came out by himself to meet me, and then the chief of police came out to meet me just to talk about, you know, pretty much like, can we? come to some type of agreement or what's going on or what you know like yeah you know we, we're taking a different approach we took our men out you see i'm coming out here by myself so those are like steps positive steps forward you know um, but it's it's not the extent i asked I, the only thing i was asking um her was you know what's up with sean fur and, and, and i mean the guy his baby shot out of his hands and he was unarmed he shot the back of his head you know like what's up with that can get fired? Like, why is it still working? Can he get tried like a regular human being? Or? And who were you talking to at that point? The police chief. Yeah, so, you know, it's like one of those things where I told her you have to, you're going to be able to, it would be to rebuild trust in the community or to build it. It's never been built. Um, trust in the community and showing that these are going to be held accountable just like all of us. Because right now it's like they have this God pass that they can execute anyone that they want. They will never even get a day off. They're definitely not getting convicted. Definitely not going to be doing any kind of time. Definitely not even getting charged, really, unless we burn the whole America down. Then they might get charged and they're probably still not going to get convicted. But that's the message they're sending that. This blue badge means that you can do whatever the fuck that you want. And that's not good. Not good at all. That's an invitation for a psychopath. Six months, and you can do whatever the fuck you want to anyone. Sexual assault any woman you want. Shoot any any person that you want. That's not good. So we want that accountability. I mean, the system is broken. It never worked to begin with. The system is built to fuck us. And to horribly fuck us and make sure we can keep on getting screwed forever. So, you know, you have to really change it, completely reimagine it. There's a reason why in all these other countries, they might have zero deaths from by police in a decade, in 10 years, two deaths in 10 years by police. And then here we have almost 10,000 deaths, you know, like within the last decade by the hands of police. So it's like, like an arm. So it's like, that's, we're majorly failing. I mean, that's something has to, something has to give, but that's not just a major fail. That's like, it's like that was set up to be like that. So, so what do you think are next steps now that <clears throat> the police line is no longer here on Capitol Hill, but that space is still occupied by the people? 
the next step is just holding the space down, staying out here, you know? I mean, until they get tired, we're not getting tired. And if we do get tired, we can sleep at the space and take shit, you know? So just holding it down and uh, waiting for change and, you know, for a while, waiting to see. Because right now we have a lot of leverage. Um, they, they know they need to change things. And you know, we're just sending that message that, you know, like the job that they're doing and we want to reclaim the building for something more positive. Um, we want to reclaim the building for our own protection, and that type of protection is not, it's not how we're talking about over here, but it's more of the teaching and educating people and educating people on their own communities so they can protect them and not be complacent, you know. So just reimagining that and still, still being a presence of um, safety, well, actually being a presence of safety and peace. You know, so yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. So you were included in the meeting a couple of days ago, a few days ago at uh, City Hall. Yeah, the mayor and the police chief. Yeah, and that was I literally bogarted my way into that meeting. I wasn't supposed to be in that meeting at all. I I kind of noticed that. Yes, you can clearly tell I was not a part of the agenda. So um, yeah, that was a wasted meeting. So, are you? Oh, would you like to say more about that? I mean, the only thing was that, the only positive thing was that, and I said, okay, so, if, um, so we don't have a meeting to have a meeting because we haven't got anywhere. We didn't get the dialogue that we we're trying to have. We had people taking the space, just talking about their organizations that had nothing to do with Black Lives Matter, had nothing to do with questions for the mayor or the police chief. So it was really weird. Felt like a setup, you know what I'm saying? It was a filibuster type thing, but. Uh, but so I said, all right, well, since that's too big, I, I had one request and it was really good. We tried to list our demands, like he was in there trying to list demands. They weren't listening. They, you know, they tried to, like, someone else interrupted so the mayor didn't have to be held accountable or didn't have to say anything. Um, and then what I said was, uh, okay, well, at least so we can, like, have, a, you know, I don't, none of us have to have a meeting, have a meeting, so every meeting should have a call to action. So let's have a simple call to action. Can you at least, while we're dealing with this thing, for your PR and for your ethics, it would behoove you to stop, uh, to to change the way that you're moving with these police officers. The police officers are out here right now um, treating us like it's the military and the most recent there and bombing us. It looks like Iraq out, Iraq out here. And I tied in something because someone said, are you going to let the military come in here and do what Donald Trump wants? And then it's just like, no, we will not do that. We will not let him do that. And I'm like, and I told him, well, you're already treating it like that. You're already bombing us. Why would we trust you? We trust that these officers are going to protect us from some threat like that when you guys are literally bombing us out using chemical warfare and showing us that you don't give a fuck about us when you care about these property and rich people's property or rich people's you know, persons if they're paying you. Like you can literally pay a cop to protect your place. You can hire a cop, so it's kind of like that's what's going on out here, and it's not the actual people that are being protected. It's, it's things. So you know, so I was saying, um, so can you do this from, from a PR standpoint? It would be helpful for you, and from whatever ethically, uh, if you can stop deploying illegal chemical warfare, i.e., tear gas and mace on us, stop using these flash grenades that are giving people new trauma that makes them feel like they're in a fucking war zone, because that's what it looks and feels like, and, um, and just take, take at least six feet back, like six COVID feet back from the barricade, so that you're not going over there and grabbing and inciting violence and starting things off and using offensive tactics. And she's like, I was like, can you, uh, no, will you do that now? Can you have that action set for like, Will you tell me that you can do, you will do that? And she's like, oh, we'll review it. They, they always say we'll review it. And then that night, they actually did everything that, that I asked right there. And I'm, and I'm not going to say I take credit for that because hopefully a thousand other people told her that. I don't know. Hopefully another person told her that. It doesn't matter. I don't care. But they did review it. And we came out to the line and they were like 10 feet back or something like that. And they, that was the first night that they didn't deploy tear gas and they didn't use flash bombs or anything like that. So it was like, wow, that was trippy because they were just going to war with us. But then the next night, and then that was when the next night the chief actually put a ban on that and said it was like, you know, no, no ban on tear gas, we're not going to deploy that, ban on flash bombs, whatever. But then the next night, an officer illegally, out of order, 
used one. And so then everybody was like, it was extra upset about that. Still, no one took an offense to it. It was still a defense, but people were pissed off. And then they knew they fucked up because he went against orders. They weren't supposed to do that. So just put that ban on there. And so then that was when they decided to leave and make that approach of, okay, we're gonna we're gonna retreat. Here you go. The precinct is yours. And then here we are today. And that's when this morning the chief wanted to have the, chief, the fire chief have a meeting with me. We had a good meeting for safety, egress, ingress, all that shit. And then uh, the chief of police wanted to have a meeting. She came by herself, which was actually kind of crazy because they didn't want to talk to us at all or they didn't want to come around to anyone at all. I'm not saying that we didn't want to talk to them, but a lot of people did want to talk to them and they didn't want to talk to them. But she, she wanted to have the meeting. I was like, sure, fine. And so then a bunch of reporters came out and, um, you know, she asked questions. I said, I didn't have the answers for her. I'm not the leader. We'll review it. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I, um, I asked her about, you know, Sean Fur, Malik, and a couple of other people that had died, and what's up with at least getting them fired. You know, we need to have accountability. That's what I was out here for. You can't just be a police officer and that just makes you can kill whoever you want. Simple. I mean, it's pretty simple. That's like, if you can just do that, it'll help you a lot. Um, and then that was that, and you know, that was like pretty much a we'll review it and those things. And I just, and I asked her, just like, where are your hands tied and what can you do? I do, I, I try to empathize for you because you are a black woman in a system that's not made for you, it's literally against you. How does that feel you feel like you come into adversities with that? You know, I kind of asked a question like that, you know, I can only imagine. That's why I said that to her at some point. But, um, you know, yeah, I wanted, I was trying to figure out where you feel your hands are tied and what are you doing, you know? What can you do and what, what kind of change can you create? Or can you? Where is it at? And she said, literally, said, like, she got to a point where she said, uh, like, I do, have, I was like, because you're the police chief, like, do you have the power to fire someone like that or whatever? And she's like, well, yes, I mean, I do, because I am the police chief. So I'm like, well, you know, it just made me think a little bit like, well, like, you know what to do. But that's so city that of was Seattle, pretty, very yeah. powerful because she said that, and I got it recorded. And, like, usually they wouldn't admit that. Usually they would just be like, well, I mean, you know. But she said that, but it must have been an early morning or some shit for her because she, she didn't just give me the political answer. She actually, she definitely said, she put the, she put the like, yeah, I actually do have power over that. So that was actually cool to hear. That's some of those things we can hold on that. So do you feel like... Um have you been collaborating with um, some of the other quote unquote city leaders agencies. or oh. and city agencies, right? City like, agencies is there is there any coalition amongst demands? Yes, yes. Um, we have city agencies that we've collaborating with, like S dot, like the garbage people, all that stuff, or whatever. Just trying to make sure the streets are still taken care of over here, and it's not just a shit show. So that was what was funny. And this in the morning, instead of. Um, Instead of them meeting with the police, like how they might usually go, they were all meeting up with me and like ask, so like I have the S dot person, I have the guard, I have the um, the water people, all these people, like, all at the same time, all trying to be like, hey, Rash, hey, Rash, how do you feel about this movement? Rash, can we uh, get the port parties over here? Is that good for you? Rash, can we move the dividers over there? And I'm just like, sounds good, that's safe there. We okay, we gotta make sure about that. Hey guys, how do you feel about this? Like, I'm just an echo for the people. I'm not the leader, you know. Don't say that, you know. Just echoing the voice of the people. Uh, but it was just like it was pretty funny. Just like, like it was like a comedy almost. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like all these random ass people that are city people. Hey, I'm the mayor's office. I'm the mayor's assistant. Guys, um, is there anything? Can we get you a stage? Can I do this? Like, like literally, she said a stage. I'm like, I mean, yeah, that could be really cool. Got a stage. It's like, I was like, whatever. Um, you know, so it was one of those things where it was like, yeah, I've never had this happen in my city like that. What the fuck is up with this shit? Like, you guys know you fucked up. So it, the leverage is different. It's weird. And in a good way, as long as we hold this shit down. And, and most of the holding this shit down is just making sure that there's no, you know, crazy fear mongering going on. And making sure that everyone's safe. And then making sure that, um, that no one wants to go and try and slip into the police station and sleep in there or something because they left the door unlocked, so. Okay, know. so how will everybody know that it's time to go home? What, 
What do you think will, I mean, the, the first demands were met, you know, to let the, let the barrier be gone, and no more tear gassing. And the, so those demands have been met. So what next? Oh, no, but those weren't the demands. That was just the human decency don't do that while we're protesting. But that's not what we're here protesting. That came about after the protest. You know, that's like, you know, what we're here for is the fact that Black Lives Matter, the fact that the police are killing black people specifically, the all people, the black people at a disproportionate rate. That doesn't make sense. Statistically, it's so fucked. Um, and that needs to change, and there needs to be accountability. You just do what's right, you know, that type of thing. Um, that's what I'm here for. And then that trails into all kinds of other things in the prison system and the disproportionate displacement of people and all that stuff. And there's all these other issues. But it starts off with just that part of the system. Like we can go into the prison system, the jail prison, that where that's other things that we'll have to tackle as well. But right now we're focusing on the police and making sure there's accountability there. And, uh, so that's what that is. Um, and a lot of people want to defund the police. Like a lot of people in the whole city want that right now. There's a lot of other cities in America that want to defund their police. Minneapolis is literally past, trying to pass the bill where they're going to abolish the police. And it seems like almost everyone's on board for it. So it's really crazy because they, you've never heard someone say abolish the police. Minneapolis already took all of their police out of their schools. And they just cut their contract, cut their funding. So like, these are things, these are unprecedented times. This has never happened before in the history of America. So who knows what's going to happen next. But yeah, so we're here for it all. And, uh, and looking for real, real change, real massive change. You guys out here for? Good night, Pop. Yep. Be safe. Thank you, you guys too. so much. Safe, you. See you tomorrow. Thank you. So, circle back to the question. How will people know when it's time to go home? <laughs> um, probably when they give us the priest precinct. <laughs> and uh, when I mean, they already said, oh, yeah, sure. But, like, when they say, okay, well, we can repurpose this for something else. This is more positive. Um, and I think some people might stick around until, I don't know, we'll see. I think if they, if they did something like that, that would be like, okay, I think you will probably be like, okay, now we're chill, we're out of here. Um, again, there's other people that want a bunch of other things, the defunding of police or this and that, that, that. Um, Nikita has some, some great demands, I think some other have some great demands as well. A lot of people are working on demands. Um, and a lot of the meetings I'm going to are trying to hear what certain people are demanding. Me, I just try to stay singularly focused, support whatever other people are saying, echo the voices, but work on you know something, work on a solution. I hear all these problems, let's try and find a solution. You know, and that's solution based. So right now, it's what we've been working on our own protection unit, so that we can protect ourselves. And my biggest thing is to eradicate complacency, so we can be able to just be there for ourselves and stand up for what's right instead of you know just waiting on an agency. And instead of, you know, people maybe call 911, but really pull out the phone to just videotape something that's happening that might be negative or could be, you know, a, a positive threat. So I, I want to be able to change that culture. And um, yeah, I have working on some, some technology for that. And, you know, I'm also working on this maybe with Seattle People Protection Unit that would be able to substitute police if they did get fully defunded so we would have our own police so that because what if you do defend the police and abolish the police or everyone call it uh, what about if there's a domestic violence call or this or that or something with children or something so to make sure that we have that together and what and did you call that Seattle People's Protection Seattle People's Protection SPP okay <laughs> so yeah and then they, they go through way more training than, than uh, Seattle Police Group. we're studying all of these other police officers and these other police systems and other countries that have zero debts and uh, and we're trying to emulate some of those things um, uh, all of our police officers need to be social workers as well like they're having to go through so many different courses it's going to be more like getting a, a degree really and um and there might be some age limits that we put on instead of you know being able to join 18 it might it might have to be 25 because that's when your frontal lobe is finally developed your, your frontal lobe controls your reasoning. That's why when people get drunk, it messes with their frontal lobe and 
lose their, their shit because they have no reasoning. So, you know, having officers that are under the age of 25 is already kind of like, that might be, you might be shooting yourself in the foot. And I remember that plethora of stupid things that I would do when I was 18, 19, 20, 21. And I look back and I'm like, why did I ever even do that? That's, that was so fucked up and dangerous. You know, so giving someone a badge and a few clearance to do whatever kind of fucked up dangerous things that they want. <laughs> no repercussions. It's not, not such a great deal. And then with our people, with our protection unit, our officers, you know, um, it's, we're not going to be this brotherhood veil where if someone does something, they just stay in there. No, if you do something wrong, you get fired or you, you whatever, whatever, just in plain clothes, like whatever, you know, you do, you would be held accountable for it just like any other person. So, you know, um, you always think of when, when people take something down, a lot of times someone else comes up and steps up, it's even worse than the thing that they were trying to replace. And we don't want to be that. That's why I like to see even the way that try, I'll try to de-escalate things or if there's an issue app, an issue with someone or whatever, always trying to handle it from a place of love and grab it back where it's like, no, 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 don't do this way that they would have done. Even if this guy says, fuck you, I hate you, fuck your mother, let's not beat him up. Let's sit down and have a conversation. We might yell in real quick, let's bring the tone down, let's have a conversation. Like just what happened over there, we diffused the situation that could have been horrible. And then we all ended up hugging it out. You know, like, there's little things like that. Nobody had to have any physical altercation except for the, oh, come on, come on. You know, and then the hugging it out. Like, man, I understand you. I saw that perspective. Now, this was my perspective, but I get that. That was very genuine. You know, it's things like that. There's even simple mediation. They need to have that. All the officers need to have that mediation process. I got that when I was in middle school. You know, um, it's things like that that are super helpful. So, um, yeah. This is Karen with RainierAvenueRadio.world, and we've been talking with Raz Simone on Capitol Hill on Pine Street and 10th. Um, is there anything else that uh, that you would like to share with our audience that maybe if they did catch any of your live streams or they're hearing rumors that you would like to address? Um, if you hear a rumor about me, don't be a bitch. Don't be a punk bitch. If you don't know me or if you don't have receipts, then it's Probably not true. I'm not a weirdo. Any kind of extreme shit, it's in my music. You know, like, I've, I've divulged any kind of fucked up things, you know, that I do in my music. Um, like, people know my, my backstory. So there's nothing extra weird, you know. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if you hear someone say some weird shit, that's probably not true. People say that, you know, he's disingenuous or, you know, he's this or that, like... No, I'm not an activist. I'm not a politician. I don't give a fuck about the things that you probably give a fuck about. I'm just out here because it's what's right. It's what we're supposed to do. And that's it. All right. <laughs> so, um, I guess I'm still curious a little bit about um, you taking on the role of providing security for this area. Um, so, you have, and then I heard you say that you have a larger vision of um, creating your own people-led police department yeah, yeah. Um, that'll take some time mm-hmm. how do you see being able to um, take on that role and do you have any other um, organizations or communities that you're it'll working be, with it'll be funded by the people um, I have a bunch of people that have reached out like some Seahawks and like artists and stuff that have money and stuff like that but um, and then we're, we're creating a GoFundMe and all that stuff that outlines all of the possible problems, all the questions, all that stuff. We're going over all of that. So, you know, we'll have it very well packaged so people can understand it. I already, you know, a couple years ago, a few years ago, I bought a you know, couple million dollar building downtown. And I'm going to take that building and give that to this. So that's that'll be our first police station. And we won't call it police because that's a traumatizing word at this point. But, and then maybe that precinct might be our next one. So, um, yeah, it's going to take a little bit, but wow, we have some crazy ideas that could make it way easier and it would take a shit ton less of, uh, of a uh, budget than what we can pay our police. So if they did get defunded 100% or at some point, or even just some percent, we could be able to step in and have with even way less money. Um, it's one of those things where I was like, yeah, I know that's crazy, it sounds crazy, but you 
can't just keep on listing problems and not coming to solutions. So we're coming to solutions. This was a makeshift, you know, thing where I pulled the, you know, the, the assault rifles out last night, you know, and stuff like that. That was just like impromptu. Okay, well, there's a need. I'm stepping up now. I'm wearing a different hat. That's what we're doing. Someone else can hold down the microphones, you know, and all that stuff. And, um, and even that went beautifully and people felt safe. So imagine when we have this next, you know, however many months and stuff to get that together and the years to come as well, you know, for this building. Um, I know it's gonna be it's gonna be a beautiful thing, especially with the the height of standards that we're that we're applying and um, and then just how strategic we are with the, with the technology that we're that we're starting to get. That's what I'm excited about. Is reimagining it and it's gonna be even more efficient than 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 the systems that, that they have and they've been doing. So is there um, any information that people could look up at this point, or is it in formulation stage? Still in formulation, but you can come out to a meeting at uh, 4 p.m. Love. Peace, bro. But yeah, you come to a meeting at 4 p.m. on Saturday. Um, it's at 1770 Airport Way South. Okay. And this is Karen with Rainier Avenue Radio, talking with Raz Simone. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share? That's it. No. <laughs> All right. I thank you for taking the time to talk with us and um, share your perspective with our audience. Thank you. Appreciate it.